panel talk will be bilingual, so we're going to use English and Arabic, okay? Um, today we have with us uh, Mr. Sinan Swayz, which is the director of uh, Jabal Amman Publishers, um, and he uh, is the publisher of this book too. Uh, they always work on enriching Arabic content and design. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Huda Abi Faris, the founding director of Khat Foundation and Khat Books. Uh, and finally, Dr. Assam Abu Awad, which is the Dean of Design Department uh, at the Applied Science University. Uh, we will also have some few guest speakers. Um, and uh, Mr. Sinan will start off the panel talk with you. Thank you, Haya, and thanks uh, for the Amman Design Week. Uh, I think this is uh, really special uh, to give some space for a book launch in uh, a Design Week like that. And I hope this will be more integrated in the future so we see more publications uh, um, about design coming out of uh, such uh, an event. Um, what we're going to do today, we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Isam Abu Awad. He helped with this project from the beginning. He will give uh, a general overview. Before that, we're going to see uh, a short video clip by the author, Diane um, Khayel from Lebanon. Um, uh, she apologizes for not being here. You will see her message uh, in a bit. And uh, then we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Huda Abi Faris and Khat Foundation. She's one of the contributors in this book. Uh, and then we're going to have contributions from other people like uh, Omar Zoubi, uh, also Miriam. She's in, in, in her way from the Dead Sea to here. Uh, and she helped in the designing of the book as well Omar is some man who is known for most of the designers, who is known for most of the designers, the national press, who have printed this beautiful book. Uh, let me speak in the beginning as a publisher. Uh, such a book is... Okay, let me show you the book. For those who haven't seen the book, you will get to see the inside as well. Such a book it was not expected to come out of Amman. Lebanon, Beirut, that's probably yes. Uh, Saudi, uh, KSA, uh, that, that probably, there's a chance because there's a muhtaraf, a Saudi, uh, who work on really nice books as well really, uh, in the design field. UAE, probably yes. But Jordan, that's an exceptional step. Uh, to have such an important book published uh, in Jordan. Of course, the contributors and the writers are from different countries, but uh, it is uh, coming from, from here. So we're proud to be part of the Amman Design Week. This book is unique. It was endorsed by people from uh, Jordan, Saudi, uh, Lebanon, UAE, Kuwait, and Qatar. Uh, it contains nine chapters and over uh, 341 pages dealing with the theoretical and the practical side of bilingualism. Uh, it shows the works of over 50 uh, exceptional designers and design studios in the region and over the world. Uh, it also shows the work of five important universities in the region. And next to Diane Mkhayel, the author, we have uh, Huda Abi Faris, Robert Bianchi, Nadine Shaheen, and Peter Martin, who have written chapters in this book. We're happy to, uh, to be the publishers of this book, and we, we hope this book will be of a benefit uh, for you as designers or interested in the design field. We're going to watch the movie from uh, Diane. It's a three, three and a half minutes, and then we're going to hear Dr. Uh, Abu Awad and uh, Dr. Huda Abi Faris. أظن في مشكلة بالصوت. Design Week. معكم ديانا مخايل مؤلفة كتاب ثنائية اللغة في التواصل البصري أنا بعتذر اليوم ما رح أقدر أكون معكم بهذا الإيفنت نظرا لظروف خاصة خارجة عن إرادتي 
ولكن بحب اتشارك معكم اليوم هالفيديو الصغير يلي بحكي فيه عن موضوع الكتاب كتاب ثنائية اللغة في التواصل البصري كتاب فريد من نوعه بطرحه هذا الموضوع بيسعى الكتاب إلى الإجابة على عدة أسئلة كنت دايما أطرحها على طلابي كيف منعرف عن ثنائية اللغة؟ هل هي ظاهرة جديد جديدة بمجتمعنا والمنطقة العربية؟ كيف منعرف اليوم عن جمهور ثنائية اللغة وطريقة تفكيره؟ وكيف المصمم بيسعى للتواصل مع هالجمهور؟ شو دور المصمم اليوم بتعزيز قيمة التيبوغرافيا بالسياقات المحلية والعالمية؟ شو الصفات الاجتماعية والتعليمية والتقنية يلي بتعطي للغة العربية دافع لتعزيز قيمتها وتطورها ونهوضها؟ تسعة فصول بالكتاب بتحاول إجابة عن كل هالأسئلة بطريقة شاملة منها بيطرح الكتاب مسار الخط العربي والخط اللاتيني بطريقة ملخصة بعدين بيتناول الكتاب مقالات غنية عن اللغة العربية وسياقاتها موضوع كتبته الدكتورة نادين شاهين ودور المصمم التيبوغرافي وقدرته التأثيرية موضوع كتبه بيتر مارتن وعن العربيزي موضوع كتبه الدكتور روبرت بيانكي كما بيتناول الكتاب رؤية ملخصة لخصائص التصميم ثنائي اللغة وتفاصيله كما وأنه بيعرض نموذج لخطوط طباعية ثنائية اللغة جدا ناجحة لأبرز مصممي الخطوط الطباعية بيركز الكتاب أيضا على مساحات التصميم وتطبيقات النظام الشبكي أو الجريد وبيقترح أمثلة مختلفة للتغلب على تحديات القراءات ثنائية الاتجاه بيعرض الكتاب أيضا حلول تصميمية للمنصات الطباعية والرقمية ثنائية اللغة لبعض المصممين البارزين والاستوديوهات تصميم معروفة وبعض المصممين الناشئين بيتداول الكتاب أيضا دور التيبوغرافيا في تغيير حياة الإنسان للأفضل كما وأنه بيستعرض نموذج لأعمال طلاب التصميم في بعض الجامعات في المنطقة العربية بيسلط الكتاب الضوء على عوامل ساهمت في نهوض تصاميم ثنائية اللغة منهم مؤسسة خط التي كتبت عنا الدكتورة هدى أبي فارس وغيرها وغيرها من المواضيع القيمة بالكتاب أنا بعتبر هذا الكتاب وسيلة لأشكر كل من جاهد وساهم في نهوض الخط العربي الطباعي ليرتقي لمستوى المنافسة غاية وشأنا في عصر العولمة أنا بشكر حضوركم وبقدم اعتذاري مرة تانية لعدم حضوري معكم كما بدي أشكر القيمين على عمان ديزاين ميك لأتحولنا الفرصة لنتشارك معكم موضوع الكتاب على أمل اللقاء قريبا بتمنى لكم عمان ديزاين ويك موفق وإلى اللقاء طيب لما إحنا بنحكي عن بايلينجواليزم يعني يمكن هيك مبين الموضوع كتير ثيوري بس مثلا بايلينجواليزم مثلا لما بنطلع هون ساحة زين الثقافية مكتوبة بالعربي وبالإنجليزي فأي إشي that involves صوت واضح أي إشي anything that involves Arabic and Latin or English scripts together in design that's part of the bilingualism we're talking about. Any, any design that involves two visual systems together uh, or uh, scripts together, that's also a part of the bilingualism. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Assam Abu Awad and Dr. Huda Abi Faris to join, to join me on this uh, beautiful stage made of uh, these cement blocks. مساء الخير يعني لسوء حظنا انه احنا رح نحكي عن كتاب كتاب بعتبره نقله نوعيه بضيف لعمالقه كتبوا في مجال التايبوغرافي في الوطن العربي على راسهم الدكتوره في كتب كثيره لكن الكتاب هذا حط نقاط ننطلق منها في المستقبل لمعرفة كيف نصمم 
التايبوغرافيا العربية مرتبطة بالتايبوغرافيا اللاتينية للأسف السكرين مش راح تعطينا ريزوليوشن كافية حتى نحكي فيجوال لانجويج عن الكتاب ونربطكم فيه بعمق فمضطرين ان نختصر الحكي ونقول ليش الكتاب هذا دايما لما بلشت تربط احداث الكتاب ما بين المقالات المكتوبة من متخصصين وما بين وجهة نظرها الشخصية وما بين وقائع موجودة على الأرض تجارب من هنا وهناك لها بصمة خاصة لها أدفانتجز هذه الأدفانتجز ممكن إنها تدعم التايبوغراف العربي انطلقت من إنه المنطقة العربية منطقة الشرق الأوسط وشمال إفريقيا غنية بثنائية اللغة عبر التاريخ هذا التاريخ اللي إحنا ممكن نتفرج فيه ونشوف قديش دخل المنطقة من محتلين من حضارات مرت قديش اغتنت هاي المنطقة بثقافات متبادلة على مر العصور نتج عنها لغة محكية ثنائية ونتج عنها لغة مكتوبة ثنائية فالكتاب حقيقة بوجه سؤال السؤال هذا اللي مفروض كل إنسان يعمل في مجال الاتصال البصري بيعتبر نفسه إما مصمم جرافيك أو مصمم في مجال التايبوغرافي يسأل حاله سؤال الجمهور اللي بتعامل معاه شو ثقافته كيف بتلقى مني تصميمي وأي اللغات دا استخدمها أحادي اللغة ثنائي اللغة ثلاثي أو متعدد اللغات كيف بدا استخدمها فالكتاب بتطلع وبشوف وبناقش وبقول لك إحنا بنحكي عن ثنائية اللغة طيب كيف نعرفها هاي شو مفهومها أعتقد إنه المختصين اتفقوا على تسميتها وعطوها تسمية طيب أنا كمصمم لما بتعامل مع ثنائية اللغة في عندي واقع اسمه واقع التصميم ليش لأن عندي ممارسين من التصميم درجات في ثقافات مختلفة في تجارب وخبرات مختلفة ممكن أن تأثر سلبا إن كانت ثقافة المصمم مش على مستوى الأداء أو المضمون اللي بنكتب نشتغل فيه فإحنا بنحتاج لمصمم واعي وقادر إنه يشتغل بطريقة صحيحة حتى الناس تدرك عمله وما تتجاهله هذا الواقع يناقش الكتاب عشان نوصل ما هو دور المصمم ومن هو مصمم التايبوغرافي بدنا نميز هل كل مصمم جرافيك قادر أن يعمل كمصمم تايبوغرافي بدنا ننتقل بعدين لأدوات التواصل البصري وكيف إحنا بنستخدم التايبوغرافي كتول في خدمة التواصل البصري ليش؟ لأنه أنا بعتقد أنه الكتاب هذا أجا ليجاوب أسئلة مرتبطة في كيف إحنا أو How do, do designers approach visual design solutions? مهم جدا إني أعرف كيف ده تعامل معه. فالكتاب أعطى أمثلة حقيقة كثيرة كيف لما الناس بتعرف شو هي ال 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 Arabic typography and Latin typography and the signs around us, in front of us, everywhere. Not in a good shape, not in a good value, not in a good design. فإذا هذا الكتاب حقيقة لما بنتعامل معه إحنا راح يكون كتاب قادر إنه يعزز الإبداعية لدى المصمم عندما يتعامل مع ثنائية اللغة. هذا الكتاب ممكن إنه يعطيني دفعة حتى أنا كمصمم. ممارس إني أقدر أتعامل مع مسارات كثيرة من التايبوغرافي العربي مقابلها مسارات متعددة في اللي هو التايبوغرافي اللاتيني فمنلاحظ كثير من المصممين المتمكنين قدروا حقيقة إنهم يتعاملوا مع التايبوغرافي العربي واللاتيني ويتحفون بأعمال قد 
تصل إلى أقصى من العالمية إن كنا نبحث عن العالمية في الكتاب ركزت الكاتبة على كيفية استخدام التايبوغرافي في أعمال البوستر لما بكون عندي التايبوغرافي متناغم متماسك صلب قادر أنه يعمل أو يوصل الرسالة بطريقة صحيحة فمش كل إنسان استخدم التايبوغرافي في البوستر ممكن أنه يتمكن من أنه يصنع شيء قادر على أنه يأثر في الناس ويعمل حالة من الإدراك لكن بنفس الوقت عمالنا منشوف مجموعة من الأحرف العربية تم تصميمها من قبل مصممين عرب وأضافت أشياء كثيرة للتصميم في مجال التواصل البصري هذه الأحرف اللي ما كناش نشوفها زمان خاصة لما بنكتب النصوص بأحجام وأحرف صغيرة لما بنطلع في الباكيجينج بنلاقي انه في تقدم في استخدام التايبوغرافي وفي امثله كثيره في الكتاب عن اسس استخدام التايبوغرافي في مجال الباكيجينج او في مجال التريد مارك او البراندينج في مجالات كثيره وخاصه في زماننا هذا لما الانسان اصبح مجبر نتيجه التلاقي الثقافي لما اصبح العالم قريه صغيره عمالنا بنشوف براندز هي أصلها في لغة لاتينية لكن بقابلها تايبوغرافي عربي فمش كل مصمم قادر أنه يعمل تعديل أو ريديزاين لبراند أو لوجا أو تريد مارك إذا ما كانش فعلا متمكن من قواعد التايبوغرافي العربي وأسسها تشريحها كيانها قيامها علاقتها مع بعض حتى يقدر فعلا أنه يتمكن من عملها إذا هذا الكتاب هو نواة نواة لأبحاث متقادمة في مجال التايبوغرافي العربي وعلاقتها في التصميم نهاية بعد ما نقرأ الكتاب بيطلع الشخص اللي هو ممكن يكون مصمم جرافيك ممكن يكون مصمم تايبوغرافي أو ممكن يكون إنسان متخصص في مجال الاتصال المرئي رح يبحث عن أداة الأداة هاي بيسموها أجنسي هذه اللي هي من بحتاجها المصمم حتى يصمم بطريقة صحيحة بطريقة فاعلة بطريقة قادرة إنها تتواصل مع الإنسان أيا كان وهذا بنسميها قدرات ثابتة الكتاب غني الكتاب أعتبره جزء منه اكاديمي وجزء منه مهني ومش راح اتاخر عليكم اكثر من هيك شكرا لكم شكرا دكتور عصام انا معي واحد هذا ممكن يضل معك طيب آه انا بدي اوجه آه دكتور عصام از ذا دين اوف ارتس اند ديزاين ذا ارتس اند ديزاين كوليدج ات ذا ساينس ابلايد ساينسز يونيفرسيتي جامعه العلوم التطبيقيه Uh, one of the issues that we really deal with as designers that most of the graduates that come from our universities lack the skills that you were uh, speaking about. So uh, maybe they know some Photoshop, they know some uh, uh, Illustrator skills, etc. In rare cases, probably they know some InDesign. Uh, but in general, the principles of design are not there. Do you teach these principles at university, not as uh, Dr. Isam Abu Awad, but I'm addressing the uh, university's uh, sector in general, because we feel that this is lacking on, on the ground. We cannot say that it is a common among all the graduates, because we have many institutions who offer design education in Jordan. But we cannot say that this institution, institution teach the principles of design the way it should be as it is reflected in the study plan. I believe that uh, the problem is not with the plan itself. It might be either with the educators, design educators themselves, or the quality of the students who are coming to study design. This is the first issue. But in general, Every four years, we upgrade our study plans to match what's going in the uh, in new world, you know. And for us, we teach typography. And really, we have changed 
the uh, study plan of this module three times within four years to, do, to uh, transform and upgrade the standard of teaching uh, typography. Uh, let's say, yes, typography nowadays, the, t uh, the education of typography is quite much different from five years back. It has transformed. Good. Thank you. I'm just asking this question just to stress the point that uh, in the professional field related to design, we expect from our universities to graduate students that are really ready for the marketplace rather than start working on them after they finish uh, the four years at university. I'm talking about my institution, really not because I belong to the Faculty of Art and Design at Applied Science University, but really we are passionate to develop and transform the design education in different ways. And we are working hard to, to be in, in connection with the market itself first, you know, and the technology and the outward, you know. So we, we are trying really to convince our students to be a designer, not a tec technician, you know. People think that design is only a software where you can use whether it is Illustrator or Photoshop or InDesign. But we believe that there should be a concept, an idea, based on the, a function and aesthetics. And believing in aesthetics and function, this requires a designer who is able to think and develop his skills and think in a way that he is going to convey a message to the, to the people. So I believe designers who are not real designers, they are not in the market. You won't find them in, in the market. And I'm very proud that if you go to the, to, to the market, you will find at least two of the three from our students in the high ranks. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Hassan. Uh, Huda Abi Faris, Dr. Huda Abi Faris. Anti uh, Alam. Uh, في uh, عالم الطيبوغرافي and blush. you're the uh, founder right the founder I'm and the founder. Uh, director of uh, Khat Foundation which is the most prestigious uh, institution in our region that takes care of uh, the typography uh, and takes the modern side of typography as well uh, I have two questions for you but it's up to you if you'd like to share more my first question before getting into the design field more. I always thought that combining uh, two logos together, the Arabic and the Latin, or the Arabic and the English, or when we do the layout for a book or publication or a poster, it all depended on the taste of the designer or the decision maker at the end. Yeah. But then I realized that there are laws <coughs> that determine the function, if that fits or not. But in the world of design and art, sometimes the boundaries and the limits are not very sharp and clear. Thank God. So where does that fall between the law and the taste of the designer? That's my first question. And my second question is, we know about Khat Foundation through your box, books, but we don't know more. Is it possible also to tell us more about Khat Foundation and how Khat Foundation could be of a help uh, to designers and typographers. Okay, I'll start with the first question um, that you asked about uh, what is, where is the balance between the taste of the designer and the laws, as you call them. I, I don't believe there are laws in design. There are maybe guidelines, there are ways of doing things that have been passed on from one generation to another, and you can take these conventions and these traditions and play with them. So the, the whole idea of design is that you break the, the rules. That's one, one of the rules that most designers have. So if you're not a, a rule breaker, you're probably not a very good designer. Um, but you probably can make nice work if you are trained by good designers. So it's not, you know, so this is the first rule I say that is not a rule either. Um, I don't think that, you know, I think a matter of taste is a matter of taste, but most of the time designers balance that in relation to the function of what they're designing for or who they're designing for. 
And um, I mean, being here in Amman after the first time I was here was 11 years ago, and I spent maybe one night uh, between the hotel and the airport. Um, and I could see a little bit of the city. And now I come, and the first thing that strikes me is the, the specially designed font for Amman. And that's a, you know, a, a bilingual typeface, or I would say by script, dual script typeface. Um, so to me, that's already like a statement from, from the city. So what your, your book, the fact that you publish it in Amman and that you're, published and that you're presenting it in Amman Design Week is, uh, yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I so so designers, I... whoever designed this, I think I know who designed it, but they also were designing, of course, they have to put their own taste in there because it's just their signatures, like your own handwriting. You can't run away from it. But what they did is also do it for the city. So they considered the city, they did the research about it, and from that research, they come up with a few of their own rules that they follow and make it. So the rule is... Is, is like um, is a personal rule most of the time, and it's a it's a conversation between the designer and their client, or the purpose of this func of the function of this of this typeface or this whatever it is they're designing. Um, so I, for Hat Foundation, you say you introduced me as uh, somebody who's been doing modern design or um, trying to break the rules of of the tradition. I um, would say that it's not so much about breaking. Breaking sounds like really harsh, that you're throwing away what's there before. And of course, that's not at all very sensible to do. And we don't do that either. Um, but what we started doing was, I mean, I, I was teaching for 12 years before, so I know all the problems that, um, that my colleague here has just was been talking about is, um, how do you, you you teach? You know that you have to teach modern design, but you don't have the modern typefaces, and you don't have the possibility to to encourage your students to do things. And then at the same time, you realize that type design is not for every graphic designer. I work with type designers, but I you know I don't design fonts myself. I have a lot of history about it. I know a lot about it. I'm very attached to it, and I like to study it. But I know that there are people that do it so much better because that's their talent. So even in graphic design or in visual communication, everyone has a kind of specific talent. Some people are good with colors, some people are good with forms. And so it's also, I think when you teach, you have to encourage people to look at what's in them, what is natural to them, and then develop it further. Um, and with, with, when we started, when I started the Khat Foundation, it was really to move away from the curricula of, of universities and to really focus on type design specifically and its cultural role. And how can we do research on that? And how can we um, provide a platform that is across Arab countries, across schools, across that is open for everyone? Because I think that we all in the Arab world as countries, but also as institutions, we kind of closed in our own world, even though we know what happens everywhere else. You know, mobility is not easy for all sorts of reasons. So the platform was to really cross these borders and to kind of make it inclusive for everybody and also for non-Arabs, which is really important because I strongly believe that if you have to design especially with writing and with scripts, it's very attached to a long history and a long culture. It's almost in your genetic code. You know, you, you, you have to be immersed in the culture to do it. And the best way to do uh, good typefaces in both languages is to be either a, a genius that you kind of really know both very well or to work with someone else. And I like this idea of working together, of people coming from different cultures and exchanging and looking at the heritage of how we had, you know, for centuries and thousands of years, connections and relationships and how to bring that back and have a conversation in a modern time. What does it mean to be bilingual today? How do you deal with the politics of it? Because everyone, you know, is so afraid of globalism because you want to preserve your identity. But at the same time, if you close up your borders, you don't preserve it, you kill yourself. So... It's this kind of, yeah, conflict yeah. that is interesting. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Dr. I talk Huda. too much. No, no, very interesting. What you're saying is very interesting. You've mentioned that there is a cultural dimension for the uh, typographic uh, design. Yeah. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I, if I take, um, I'll just talk about Arabic because that's where my passion is. <laughs> 
but uh, it, it would apply to other cultures as well. Um, I think with Arabic specifically, the, the Arabic script is really an identity. I mean, you see Arabic script and you, if you walk into a country and you see signs with Arabic, you know you're in an Arab country. You may not know which Arab country you are, but if you're really in tune, you probably would also know because of the styles that is mostly used and so forth. So this is an, a cultural identifier. The fact that it is related to the language makes it even closer to our hearts um, because the Arabic language is very diverse. It's very different from one... I mean, I'm talking in English here because if I start to talk in my own dialect and then somebody else talks, I get confused because of the way my brain works or doesn't. So it's also this, this language that ties us together but is also different in every culture and the same with the script. And so we have a very specific relationship to it. And what's interesting with the Arabic script and also the Arabic language, because I've been publishing books and doing translation from um, English to Arabic, and every time somebody picks up the Arabic text, depending where they come from or their background or education, they have something to say about it, which is very interesting because, I mean, if I pick a book that's written in English and it's not so fantastically, you know, translate it, nobody says anything. But in the Arab world, everybody corrects you. And so that is a very strong cultural attach attachment to it that I think with the Latin script, they, it's, not like, it's not the same. People are, they, they see it as a practical tool. We see it as a cultural identity. So it's a very different emotional attachment to the writing. Okay, thank you. I'm going to invite as well uh, Omar Zoubi. I think uh, many people know Omar Zaibi by name, or maybe they know, they know him through his designs. Uh, Omar have, uh, have been the, uh, the, the person behind, as a design house and as a person. Uh, the person behind the Amman Design Week visual identity of last year, right? Me and Yusuf. As, uh, Yusuf. as design. Where, where is Yusuf? Yusuf Abdrabbo. Marhaba Yusuf, <coughs> kifak. I'm talking about the mother and the <laughs> but okay. also one of the very popular places that we all like to go to is Shams al Balad, which is a vintage style. So, um, and it is a, a hybrid of Arabic and English together in a nice way that doesn't, uh, it mixes very well together, but it doesn't feel that it is... It's a mismatch. Yeah, mismatch. Uh, so you made matchmaking, we made mismatchmaking. Mm -hmm. Uh, matchmaking is when you take scripts يعني حروف عربية وتطبقوا uh, وتخليوها تلبق كتير على الإنجليزي بتحسوها من نفس اللغة uh, uh, ترجمة والمزاوجة بالضبط اللي صار مثلا بمثال شمس البلد uh, حاولنا نرجع لأنك زي ما حكيتي العربي فيه ارتباطات uh, ثقافية كتير أتقل من الإنجليزي الإنجليزي زي ما يعني هاي النقطة إحنا كيفنا عليها لأنه الإنجليزي بتشوفيه كفنكشن إنه بس خلاص ترجم بس أحكي لي شو هي بديش أفهم منك uh, ما بعد يعني almost شفاف الحرف ال ال اللاتيني يعني فاللي صار إنه سوري أنا مرشح فسامعيني من أنفي يمكن أنتو فاللي صار بشمس البلد بالمسماتش اللي هو مبدأ ال الكافية أو المطعم كان grass roots أو هو مبدأ إنه بده يوظف الناس ال الموجودة محليا كل إشي حتى من الخبز للمية لل للخضروات كل إشي كان يعني عم بت عم بفتخر بهذا ال بهذا العنصر ف فحسيت صار في مسماش بموضوع إنه كيف مع إنه هو تعامل معانا إحنا كلوكل ديزاينرز يعني كعين فصار الموضوع how can we undesign it كيف ممكن نفكر بموضوع إنه ما يكونش كتير مصمم ما يكونش ما يكونش في شعور إنه لأنه هذا فخ بيوقعوا فيه كتير مصممين لما بيصمم مزيادة عن اللزوم لما بصير في زركشة وزيادة وإحنا هون حط اللوجو وين ما بتروح أعرف فا understated حسينا حسينا إنه لو تركنا لو محكاش معانا حازم ونزل بالشارع نفس الشارع تبع اللي هو أوف فرين بو ستريت يعني وإذا نزل بنفس الشارع ولقى له شي خطات كيف كان ممكن يتعامل بالموضوع من أسرع أو أكتر سكريبت رومانسي اللي هو النص تعليق أو الفارسي وبعدين البلوك لترز الإنجليزية اللي هي الكابيتلز هي كتير سهلة تنعمل عند الخطاطين العرب وهذا طبعا كان جزء من لاحظنا بالسنة الماضية مع مان ديزان ويك ما بعرف إذا أي حدا منكم بتذكر الكرافت ديستريكت لما صاروا كل الأرمات المحلات تخططت بالإيد وكانت الأحرف الإنجليزية بسيطة يعني لأنه شفنا لها فنكشن أما هناك صار 
الرقص والرومانسيه والحكي انت وين رحت؟ ليش؟ صرت حولت لكتاب تحولت لكتاب اه بتطلع هيك راح سنان <تصفيق> فبس هذا مثال واحد بس مثلا في مس ماتش حتى بالبراكتس تبعنا لانه لما سوينا اسبوع عمال للتصميم قد ما كان احنا في عندنا وعي انه لازم العربي يكون له ثقله بس هون 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 تساوت الامور اكثر شمس البلد لما بدنا نحكي كان بده يعزز اكثر الهويه العربيه فحكى اه انا العربي لازم يكون مهم عندي وال وال والاجنبي اللي بمر بقرا الاسم اصغر فصار مو صارت يعني خدم الانجليزي كترجمه بعمان ديزاين ويك لانه وهذا شيء اي ثينك توصلته توصلته له بالكتاب انتم منيح المفردات والمصطلحات بالتصميم باللغه العربيه كثير جديده فريش يعني حتى في اشياء يمكن هم انتم طلعتوا فيها قررتوا انتم من عندكم من راسكم اه اوكي <تصفيق> لا بس بحكي انه فهذا بس هاي دلاله على موضوع انه الحكي عن التصميم باللغه العربيه لساته شوي بده نضوج بده طبخ فحتى لما اشتغلنا على عمان ديزاين ويك صار في فيري كونشس ديسيجن يعني اخذنا احنا قرار بكامل قوانا العقليه انه لا في تساوي ما بين العربي والانجليزي بال باللوجو خلينا نحكي مخ خصيصا بس بعدين لانه اللوجو رح يكون هو موجود رح يكون له وجود عالمي اكثر بس لما صار الموضوع موضوع تواصل الفرق بين اللوجو والتواصل او الكوميونيكيشن هو لما على على الدعايات البوسترز الاشياء اللي شفتوها هذولاك البرتغانيه انه كيف الحكي الانجليزي يمكن شوي بصف على جنب لانه عم تحكي اكثر مع اغلبيه اغلبيه محليه ففي تنشن لطيف الواحد يتعامل معاه بين 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 العربي والانجليزي اولموست انه بس كمان هذا التنشن بتطلع كثير اشياء كوابيس يعني خصوصا انه بصير الموضوع انه لا مين بده يلحق الثاني هل العربي بده يلحق الانجليزي او الانجليزي بده يلحق العربي ف اتس كايند اوف كانه ما فيش ما فيش اي قابليه انه نخلق مساواه ما بين اللغتين طيب انا بعتذر اذا حكيت بالعربي لا لا ممتاز بالعكس احنا الفكره انه ذا بوك از اباوت بايلينجواليزم انا الباي الثاني انتم حكيتوا انجليزي ذا سيشن از اباوت بايلينجواليزم اند ذا توك از ويل يعني اذا بنلاحظ هون مثلا هذا عكس اللي عمله عمر اوكي عمر بي او عين ديزاين عين ديزاين آه اللي كان عامله انه الفينتج ستايل تبع شمس البلد والخط الفارسي غير هون هذا ذس از ا جود ماتش رايت اللي عمله عمر هو برو يعني ات واز ا مس ماتش رايت توتال توتال اوبوزيت ضربوا يعني آه. ضربوا مع بعض بس برضه التركيبه طلعت حلوه يعني this is some of what is addressed in the book about bilingualism. طيب في معنا كمان شخص بحب أطلب منه كمان. ساحة لإله آه. لا أنا عمر خلاص. لا خليك خليك. بصير في كثير عمارات على. في أسئلة العمارين جنب بعض. عمر, عمر سمان من المطبعة الوطنية. We've been working together for uh, many years. And uh, Omar is not just uh, يعني managing the printer, but he's an artist by himself. فاوي اند جرافيك ديزاينر از ويل سو وي ريفير تو هيم ان لوتس اوف كومبلكس ايشوز ان وين ات كمز تو ذا بوك برودكشن سو از وي ار توكينج اباوت ا بوك لونش ريليتد تو بايلينجواليزم عمر كود يو شير ان 3 مينتس ا ليتل بيت وات دو يو ريكومند ذا ديزاينرز تو تيك انتو كونسيدريشن وين ات كمز تو بوك برودكشن ويل ذا فيرست ثينج اود لايك تو سي از when you're a new fresh graduate or a new graphic designer and you hadn't had an opportunity to work with a printing company or publish your first book, yeah, the first problem you might notice or face is uh, that not everything you see on the screen is what's going to happen on, uh, in, in print. And it takes a bit of experience and a bit of trial and error and a, a good knowledge of printing background to, to be able to get the, the results you want. And this is something we face quite often with uh, uh, fresh graduates, is that they have not had a uh, proper training with the print media. And uh, 
when you're dealing with the screen, on, uh, most people are designing on their computers before they, design, they don't do as they used to in the previous designing and sketchbooks and everything. They go directly to the computer. So all they're looking at is reflective screens. And then they're coming to deal with paper. So they're expecting that what they see on their screen is going to translate uh, the uh, same way on paper. And they will uh, probably find out that that's not what happens. So uh, it's always advisable for anyone wanting, wanting to start design to get a background in printing. Because uh, there are many, many techni technical issues that you have to take into mind. A lot of uh, kinds of papers, textures, and uh, media. Uh, there are different kinds of uh, pr products. I mean, you've got soft cover books, you've got hard cover books, you've got uh, saddle stitch books. And then you've got the coated and uncoated paper. And then you have to deal with the colors that you're seeing on the screen, which are uh, reflecting into your eye, rather than looking at the paper and the paper reflecting the colors back to, your, to you you get two different uh, results. And uh, somebody who's just worked on the computer might not be able to understand that at the beginning. But with trial and error, you might be able to get a better idea. Okay. Thank you, Omar. Thank you so much. OK, we'll give, uh, like, Haya 10 minutes for questions and answers. Do we have the luxury for questions and answers? OK, we have seven minutes. We'll try to make it in five minutes. Uh, you have somebody from. Uh, a printing, national, uh, the national press, we have a, a designer, we have uh, an educator, both educators, but an educator that is still teaching, and an educator is, uh, that is a specialist in typography. So please feel free if you have any questions for them. هنا الثيوري هنا الشغالين احنا احنا الريل لايف هناك ال هناك اللي بحلموا Please ask us a question otherwise we feel like we're just furniture Do you have any question I have a question for Dr Huda what do you recommend uh, to those who work on the typography, uh, whether as uh, students or as practitioners, what's your advice and uh, recommendation for them? Um, wow! wow. Um, if I was design, if I was to design, uh, if I was given uh, the chance to design an Arabic font, for example, I would really uh, explore all the old traditional calligraphy, all the old experiments with lettering on signs, all the the funny posters, the vernacular typography, and get inspired from it. I would take sort of what Omar did, but then make it designed instead of just. Um, you know, kind of like free. <laughs> Take away a bit of it and try to understand a little bit the structure behind these things and then kind of be inspired by them to create something completely different. Not to recreate them, but to do something with the mentality. And is there one particular um, uh, skill uh, the student or the practitioner that works on typography uh, they should have? يعني هل في مهارة معينة تبرز أكثر من المهارات الثانية اللي بيشتغلوا على تصميم الخطوط الطباعية لازم تكون موجودة عندهم. They have to be, I think, um, they have to balance somewhere between um, like the, the ability to to experiment, but at, at some point they have to be absolutely very very organized because it's really about structures and systems and building something. It's like yeah, it's like architecture, really. But usually designers are not organized people. Oh, some are very organized. And if you design a book, you'd better be organized. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't work. OK, uh, there's a question over there. First, thank you so much for the talk. Uh, my question is, I suppose, on forms of visual communication outside of printed text, um, and particularly the difference between reading left to right and right to left. How does this affect like, visual art or quantitative uh, visual communication? Thank you. Is it to me, the question, or is it to all of us? Okay, um, so the question is, how does it affect communication to read from right to left or left to right? 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. Um, yeah, I, I think I think in a way, if you're, it probably is organizes the way you first look at an image, where how you read it, which direction you read it in. But it's a matter of, um, yeah, practicing. So I think if you if you're born with 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 bilingualism, you read both ways. So you don't have a problem. If you're born in Japan, you also read from top to bottom. So it's so people can. It's it's a matter of what you what you what you grew up doing. Is that answering your question? I, I suppose that the question is maybe more when you're designing a piece of visual communication um, and you're thinking about things that aren't just the text, aren't just the letters. How do you change other visual aspects of whatever the thing is? Advertisement, book painting for people who, you know, might be used to reading one way or the other? Wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> I have no idea, <laughs> actually. I think, I mean, I think it's, it's reading is reading, so you read an image. And so if I, if I was to design for, for a culture that reads both direction, I don't think about it. And maybe if I do have to be specific, then I will start to think about it. If I think they can read in any direction, I don't think about that. So I think it might uh, affect the way you organize the information and the way you put hierarchies. But, um, but you know, sometimes it's, it's, yeah, maybe Omar wants to answer it. There are some, um, like, basic theories, I think, about where does the eye travel when you're looking at, uh, at layouts, per se. And you, you know, the Z, basically. The F, the so many people have so many different uh, forms exactly that they. Uh, so I think more or less because this kind of abstracts away and or takes away the fact that you are reading just like a line or letters and you're looking at the visual components within, within a certain uh, surface. Let's say, um, I mean you cannot accommodate for everybody. <laughs> uh, eventually, I mean, uh, it could be it could be decisions where you want to kind of direct the people to look here, or rather look here, or rather look here, you know. But I think um, I don't think there is. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I've done a lot of work on book design, bilingual book design. So I do English Arabic books, and it's very challenging for that reason because it's precisely like where does the book start? Do you have two books? Uh, so I've tried all the possibilities of mixing the languages. So sometimes you flip reading and you read backwards if you want. If you can read both languages, you can do that. Uh, you can skip pages, so you can do that one thing. You can run it like the way this book is designed, parallel horizontally. So they are completely parallel, like a scroll. So there are different ways that you can explore. There are, there are at least, as far as I know, not too many books. Yeah, so this is one example. Uh, another example would be to make the book on one side Arabic, one side English. They meet in the middle. I've seen people do it. You flip the book. So there's all sorts of ways you can play with it. I don't think that, um, as, as Omar said, you can't answer everybody, but as a designer, you can tell them how, to, how you want them to read it. And that is something that should be, you should be very conscious of why you do it and what kind of effect you want to get from the people reading it. You can't ahead of time know what they want. You, you know what you want, so that's easier to start. And you, can, you have to take the risk that they might not like your design, but that's life, you know? It's, uh... Thank you, Huda. Uh, a quick question and quick answer from the panelists. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, my, question, my question is going to be quick. I'm not sure the answer is going to be quick, but let's see. Um, Dr. Huda, um, where do we draw the line between looking at Arabic typography as form versus looking at it as a reflectant of a style? Because every time we see like this new typeface that's coming out, it's always related to something inspired by Nasekh meets uh, Kufi to create this typeface. But where do we detach ourselves from that to look at it as purely as forms? Because that, I feel, is a very huge tension between typographers, where some typographers feel that we need to stick to the rules that were set in the script. So if I want to do a typeface, I need to follow um, the proportions of nasikh if it's for reading. But then other typographers say, no, let's just break those rules and look at it as purely as form. So where do we draw that line? Or what's your take on that? 
I don't think you need to draw a line. I think you need to cross the line and play between the two fields. I think that's the best solution. So sometimes, if you, I think as a designer, again, you have to really think about the function of what you're doing. So if you're making something uh, for a newspaper, then your, your typeface should be invisible. So which means that you have to play by the rules because otherwise it's disrupting the reading. If you are making a poster and you want to play, then there is no rules anymore. You can invent your own rules. So I, do, I don't really think that um, you need to make a decision. Um, on your point of whether we see it as form or text, it's impossible. If you read Arabic, you can only read it. Like, I've, I've, if you see the letters or remotely something that looks like Arabic, you try to read it. It's in your head. You can't run away from that. And the best way to do it is not to read any Arabic. So if you don't know any Arabic, then you can look at it as pure form. But it's impossible if you can read it. But it's an advantage too. Huh? Because then you know how far you can play without getting completely into nonsense, and I'm going to be quiet. Thank you. Uh, I got uh, Haya's approval for one last question from here. Assalamu alaikum, jami'an. Ana soali basit jiddan, huwa inu kif ihna bi imkanna fa'alan nida'am al-loga al-arabiyya min khilal al-event, kif bi imkanna fa'alan ntawar al-loga al-arabiyya min khilal tahadduthna fiha bidayatan, yani ana الملاحظة الصغيرة اللي كان حبيت أحكيها إنه كان لابد من إنه نعطي وفرة أكبر لحديثنا باللغة العربية ولأنه في كتير من جمهورنا متلقي باللغة العربية يعني كان واللغة العربية واحدة من أجمل ومن أقدم اللغات في العالم وذات تاريخ أعتقد أوسع وأعمق من أن يتم تجاهلها يعني أنا واحد من الناس كنت الأول على المملكة في دبلوم الجرافيك الأول على جامعة فلادلفيا بالتخصص ومع هيك قررت إني أكمل ماستر باللغة العربية بسبب حبي وشغفي لها وحبي للتايبو وحبي لل للتايبنج يعني جرافيك أو تايبنج ديزاين أو فون ديزاين بشكل عام فهاي ملاحظة صغيرة أنا حبيت أوصلها ومجهودي يعني شكر ومجهود مب مبارك من الجميع وشكرا شكرا كثير طبعا انا بحكي مزبوط يمكن كان جزء من الحكي بالانجليزي جزء من العربي يمكن الانجليزي غلب على العربي هذا بالتنسيق مع عمان ديزاين ويك وعشان نقدر نوصل للغالبيه اللي كانوا موجودين نشكرك على الملاحظه هاي ملاحظه جدا مهمه طبعا احنا بنحكي الناس الموجودين هون انكلودينج الدكتوره هدى ابي فارس ومؤسسه مؤسسه خط هي مؤسسه تعنى في التايبوغرافي العربي يعني شغلتهم الشاغلة إنه إحياء التايبوغرافي العربي شكرا شكرا إلك لا فإحنا يعني بس أنا بحب أشكر ال... لا بدي أحكي أول إشي بشكرك بس أنت كمصمم تعرف إنه لكل عمل في وظيفة والوظيفة تتطلب شكل من أشكال التعامل معها وهذه الورشة والمحاضرة وظيفتها أن تقدم كتاب بتحدث عن ثنائية اللغة فاضطرينا أن نستخدم اللغتين حتى نتعامل مع جمهور أيضا مش عربي موجود بيننا شكرا لك شكرا دكتور عصام بحب أشكر الجميع Uh, الشغل على كتاب بايلينجواليزم يعني it was uh, literally a nightmare كان كابوس بالنسبة إلنا uh, ما توقعنا كم الجهد اللي uh, أخذوا هذا الكتاب uh, بس تقدروا تطلعوا عليه لأنه هو بتعرض للجانب النظري والجانب العملي وبالآخر صممنا بهاي الطريقة زي ما أنتم شايفين عشان نحل المشكلة أنه ما نعطي uh, شيء على شيء لأنه الكتاب عم بحكي عن البايلينجواليزم وهنا لما نحط النصين مع بعض في كتاب كامل بحكي عن البايلينجواليزم هذا تحدي لانه ما بنقدرش نكسر القانون او القواعد اللي بنحكي عنها في البايلينجواليزم فان شاء الله نكون نجحنا بهذا الشيء بحب اشكر الجميع الكتاب متواجد حاليا في الشوب تبعت عمان ديزاين ويك بالهنجر وموجود حاليا هون سعره 45 دينار بسبب عمان ديزاين ويك هو معروض ب 40 فاذا حدا بحب يعني يحصل عليه موجود هيو معروض هنا وبعد هيك إذا بتخبروا الناس التانيين موجود بالشوب شكرا للدكتورة هدى أبي فارس شكرا للدكتور عصام أبو عوض شكرا لفناننا ومصممنا الرائع عمر الزعبي بحبش نسميه فنان وشكرا لأجل عمر السمان ومبسوطين برضو أنا شفت حسين موجود معنا اللي هو كمان من الناس اللي معروفين جدا بهذا المجال شكرا لكم لحضوركم ويعطيكم العافية